In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, we've got Radeon RX 6700 XTs on tap. We've got uh, all kinds of stuff, and the stream is now streaming in my ear, which isn't good. We've got uh, Intel making cracks on the crackers at Apple, and all kinds of fun and frolic. Next. Uh, see, that's what happens, Chris, when you rush me. I didn't mute the stream and I botched my teas. Uh huh. See, I've been here for like 10 minutes waiting for you guys, and it's like 528. You're finally showing up. Hey, I'm yeah. all good. <laughs> <laughs> I got to blame somebody for my fumble. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I'm a good I, peon like that. Yeah, no, it's fine. No, I, I, uh, I definitely was uh, trying to pull together the uh, the tease there, and uh, then uh, YouTube decided to pipe its stream into my ear. And boy, isn't that confusing when you're hearing yourself delayed? Hey, how you doing, everybody? Dave Altavilla here, and welcome to a yet another fine edition of the Two and a Half Geeks webcast. We've got lots of stuff going on, um, lots of uh, happenings, even though it is St. Patty's Day. And we should be happening around a pub somewhere, probably. But we're working and slaving as always. You know, how you doing, fellas? Marco Chipet is here. Chris Getting is here. How's it? How's it going today? Top of the whatever to you. I'm working on <laughs> all it. Ma all mashed potatoes. <laughs> you did that pretty good job there for a, an, an <laughs> Italian guy. <laughs> no, I, I look Irish. Don't I look Irish? Yeah, yeah, you look Irish. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, like the map of Italy and, looks Irish, and I'm not as <laughs> Irish as I probably look. You are definitely you. You definitely are have an Irish thing going on. Maybe you could it's be Norwegian, some sort of Nor Norwegian, Nordic, whatever. One of the Nordies. But uh, yeah, no, good to see everybody. Um, we're back again. Took a little hiatus last week because there was too much, too much to do, and not enough hours to do it in. Um, but we're back now, and uh, thanks for joining us. Um, what's, what's going on in your neck of the woods today, Marco, let's start with you. Anything exciting for St. Patrick's day? Uh, and then we'll get to what's in your lab as well. Of course. No, no nothing exciting. We actually celebrated, um, you know, my, my family, super Italian doesn't celebrate my wife's family, although they're mostly Italian, they, uh, they're half Irish and they love that side. So we actually celebrated the feast of St. Joseph and St. Patrick's day this weekend with, with, uh, my wife's family, but tonight we're just chilling. You know, we got the girls on spring break. So my kids are home going to throw some steaks on the grill and just relax tonight. There you go. There you go. Chris, anything epic on your, uh, on your horizon this evening? Uh, not for partying. I think this beer is about it. Work has been crazy. So, uh, gotta be back at it early in the morning and carry on from there. What are you imbibing over there, Chris? Is that, is that a Guinness? Guinness? It, it is. It's the Guinness extra stout. So yes. true, true to form. It, would it be Guinnesses in the plural or would it be Guinness? I don't know. That's a little, uh, little weird. I don't know. <laughs> Let's stick with Guinnesses, multiple Guinnesses, if if you're imbibing them tonight. It's it is the holiday to to have a, a beverage for some reason. I, I don't know why the Irish uh, got uh, stuck with that, but it's probably a good label to have. Um, <laughs> cold Cold Harbor Brewing, Brewing Company right here. And let's see if I can get you. got to cover your face. There it is right there. Okay, am I covering now? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Cold Harbor Brewing Company from scenic Westboro, Massachusetts, right up the street from me. Westboro, Massachusetts, about 15 minutes away, uh, makes the 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 Novocaine. The Novocaine. So, in other words, we're gonna we're gonna numb our pain, and uh, I'm gonna need it from the pain of that intro. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> never recover, never recover from that. <clears throat> but hey, what are you gonna do? So yes, uh, cheers everybody! It's uh, it's beer thirty somewhere, and it's uh, St. Patrick's Day. So there you go. A sip. All right. Well, let's dive in. Let's dive into the headlines first. Actually, let's let's mention real quick what's in the lab. Marco, what do you get going on over there? What what's on the uh, the front burner for you in terms of hardware? Um, front burner in terms of hardware, we have um. We have Rocket Lake S in-house with an Asus Z590 motherboard. I think I can show it since the embargo, the picture embargo lifted. Yeah, yeah, so, you can show yeah, things. That, so, Just a series yeah, of pictures. I mean, yeah, there, there's some pictures up. That's the uh, that's the motherboard. I have not set anything up yet. So that is which which motherboard is this? Let me. That's an Asus of some sort. 
it's it is the Asus. Let, let's let not break my office. That is the the Maximus thirteen Hero gaming motherboard Z five ninety chipset, and I have the um, Core i nine eleven. What is it? Eleven nine hundred K in house, and the Core i five eleven six hundred K in house. So they have not been benched yet, but they are here. We um, we're hearing that we should probably wait till the last minute to benchmark because there might be some uh, some micro code updates. But we'll see. That's that's just rumor. We did not hear that from Intel. But yeah, I have that. I have you know stuff that I'm super late on. I need to apologize to Sapphire and Colorful. I have two GPUs that have been tested for weeks um, that are in the CMS that I still have to write. And um, I think other stragglers that I have to go look in the in the pile. <laughs> stragglers, stragglers are always a tough thing. What are you going to do? But hey, you just keep grinding. You just one day at a time, That's right? It. One day at That's a time, it, man. By gum, it's been Chris, busy. Chris, what what are your days filled with these days? You you've got something in the back that's been hulking over you for a, for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, well, nothing behind me right now, but oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, speaking of things that are way behind, uh, the EVGA XR1 capture card I have going and it's kind of turning into a how to use it streaming behemoth uh, that should be very fascinating and useful. Um, even if you're not going to use the EVGA capture card, it should be helpful for just capture card use in general or even just setting up a stream and understanding what the bit rates do, the encoding presets do. So trying to make it uh, nice and evergreen and useful for everyone. Um, and then I've also got a Alienware Aurora desktop sitting next to me, all AMD powered with the 5800X CPU and 6800X TGPU. Um, so I've got that ready to benchmark as soon as I, you know, get the EVGA finished. <laughs> Again, another situation of just requiring more hours in a day than, than oh, yeah. physics allows. Um, but that's okay. Hey, good stuff. Um, sounds like we're, uh, it, hey, when you're busy, that's a good thing. You know, job security, as they say. Um, I've got uh, I've got some mobile stuff. I've been doing the mobile uh, two step. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Um, phones, and this this is one that we'll talk about shortly. This is the ASUS ROG Phone Five. It is an absolutely beastly Android gaming phone. The other phone that I am really, really tickled about that um, I'm digging in more and I, I, I can't pass judgment on it because the embargo lift uh, has not expired yet. That'll be next week. But this is the OnePlus uh, 9 Pro. I also have a OnePlus 9 here. OnePlus sent their kit of love. And man, let me tell you, impressive looking stuff. So we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> and uh yeah, it's uh, it's really um, you know some good stuff going on right now. Lots of releases still, both in the the mobile side, the desktop side, and uh, heck, even in the data center. Uh, AMD um, making some noise as well as Intel recently. So uh, man, we're firing on all cylinders. Let's uh, let's kick around some of the headlines, shall we? Yes, let's do yes. it. All right, cool. Uh, let's talk about Samsung's SSD 980 review, affordable NVMe uh, storage, PC NVMe storage. I'll drop this into the collective chat in StreamYard. By the way, shout out to the folks at StreamYard. What you're seeing here is a multi-stream interface pulled together by the folks at StreamYard in their um, in their tool, their their web-based tool. Impressive stuff. Um, helps our production value immensely. Allows us to integrate comments. Really good stuff. StreamYard.com. Check it out. You'll like it. Not sponsored, by the way. Just like their tool. Hey, um, so. <laughs> <laughs> There's the link. I dropped it in the chat. The uh, SSD 980 uh, from Samsung. Marco, you reviewed this. What do you think real quick in a turbo review? Yeah, so interesting drive. This was Samsung's first DRAM-less drive. So, uh, you know, take the latest <clears throat> NAND that's on the 980 Pros, lop off the DRAM and create a more affordable drive. But they, these, the, the SSD 980 does use HMB, so it will use um, a portion of your system memory as the cache. So instead of having an integrated DRAM cache, it uses a portion of system memory. But between their turbo write technology, you know, that, that uses um, part of the NAND as an SLC write buffer and using the HMB, it's actually a pretty decent performing drive. There was a time where most enthusiasts would have said, stay away from any drive without DRAM. 
but for an afford a relatively affordable SSD, not the cheapest M.2 SSDs out there, but among the more affordable, um, pretty decent performance. And if you now, if you look at you know, sustained rights, or you look at some of some of the synthetic numbers, it's it's middling. Nothing's going to make you say wow. But if you look at the trace based benchmarks, you know the real world stuff, the four the random four Ks and the PC mark tests, pretty strong little drive. So for the money, mm -hmm. if you don't need a blazing fast top end SSD, but you want a you know a well known established brand like Samsung, the SSD nine eighties are nice. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's the there's the PC mark uh, PC mark scores there. As you can see, um, let's scroll down to the drive score. Yeah, um, hanging in there with uh, the likes of um, the 970. Well, faster than 970 Pro's previous generation, and hanging in there with with Intel's 670P. Good stuff for sure. Yeah. So something to so what I tried to do, like I don't. I don't like to put a ton of drives in the graphs and just clutter things up. So the six drives tested here, right? There's a top end PCIe 4 SSD 980. I should make that distinction. That's when one other difference. The SSD 980 non-pro are PCIe Gen 3. The pro is Gen 4. But, you know, the, the new Intel drive, the 670P, that's another DRAMless drive, uh, PCIe Gen 3. But there is a PCIe entry-level Gen 4 drive from A data in that mix, plus the previous Gen high-end 970 Pro. So, you know, to see this DRAMless drive beating the 970 Pro, that's that's interesting, you know, like that's that's a good result. So no, it's not the fastest drive you can buy today, but a pretty darn fast drive considering its specs. Right. Yeah. So so we're seeing that, you know, the the performance isn't too far off in in real world to use without the DRAM cache, but how might that affect it for longevity? Have they have they given a warranty statement or total bytes written that they're pointing at on this? Ye yeah, so still this standard five-year warranty on this guy. And terabytes written is 150 terabytes written per 250 gigs of capacity. So 600 terabytes written on the one terabyte drive. That's a really good rating mm -hmm. relative to other mainstream, you know, mid-range drives. Yep, I just bring that up because that's usually the other concern to going DRAM-less um, besides uh, performance. Yep. There you go. There you yeah. go. And... Tuwani says chat is silent today. We need to get in the comments there. Yeah. Yo, yeah. and uh, while while we have Tuwan here in the chat, big congratulations are in order. Our very own cute little Tuwan got a job at Intel. <laughs> cute <Yeah>. little Tuwan. <laughs> I'm not sure he's going to appreciate being called cute little, but you know, cute's probably nice. <laughs> well, in, in, in our private chats, I, I say things to Tuwan that would, you know, I can't run for office. Let me put it that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yes. Congratulations, Tuwan. He is, he'll be, uh, <laughs> He'll be uh, showing up at Intel at an Intel headquarters near you, um, probably remotely first uh, with COVID going on. But yeah, congratulations, buddy. Uh, nice career path move for sure to join the team at Intel. All right, uh, let's move on from SSDs and show something super geek. I'll drop it in the chat as well. Behold, behold, I say, the Sweet Rock Pi X powered serene screen aquarium and how to build one. Uh, this was from a buddy of ours, Colton Westrate, who is um, a maker extraordinaire. I'm going to uh, let me see if I can uh, share this uh, share. Uh, oh, come on. StreamYard. You just, you just unshared it. Yeah, I know. Well, I had it <laughs> shared. It was. Yeah. Anyways, Chris, you're, you screwed me up pushing all these buttons. It's your uh -huh. fault again, Chris. No, yeah, so always. there. <laughs> there is the serene screen aquarium look at that thing that is cool um That's awesome that is a, a yes. raspberry pi powered uh screen saver on a display of uh, i think it's a 480p but 1920 by 480 resolution display and um yeah man it's powered by raspberry pi x let me see if i can play this video so this is a, it's a rock. This is a rock Pi X. This rock, is an X eighty six board. X. That's what I yeah, meant yeah. to say. Yes, rock Pi X. Uh, rock. Yes, it's uh, Intel Atom Vintage. There it is, right there. The rock Pi X. But as you can see, with a uh, acrylic napkin holder uh, as the base <laughs> for the aquarium, and then a three D printed uh, you know wood stand or simulated wood stand. 
uh, just really cool stuff. Will that will that work in full Hell view? Hell yeah! Can I you guys see love, that? I love I love this see project, that. man. Yeah, I, I am now in full view mode, so it's a little I can't see anything. But let me skip through. Look at that thing. Look at I it. I love it. I love that thing. <laughs> <laughs> just, if we can get that aspect ratio everywhere, uh, I'd really like that. Super wide, yeah. I don't know. Let's Del, see. Let's 40 inch curved, super wide. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Good stuff for sure. Let me uh, remove that from the stream. The Rock Pi X, uh, yes, again, uh, atom based uh, chip and thus runs Windows. Um, Windows is running on that thing. And and then the yeah. screensaver, of course, too. Marco, what are your thoughts, real quick? And we'll move along. And uh, Chris, if you have anything to share, of course, too. But um, this is right up your alley, Marco, because I know you're a super geek on the maker side. Yeah, man, I love that. So when I was first dating my wife, like she got that screensaver. I loved that screensaver. But when this, you know, Colton wrote us. Colton is is formerly of, of the Tech Report. Um, you know, you know, Dave forwarded it to the team and says, Hey, what do you guys think of this? And I was like, I freaking love that thing. I thought it was so cool. So cool. <laughs> For the first like two seconds, when you look at the video, you think it's a real aquarium, and then you see like his giant hands come in and manipulate it. I, I just right. think that's such a cool creative project. I would love to have that on my desk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect, perfect desk de uh desk topper, paperweight, <laughs> yeah, man. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuani says, I'm totally making one of those when my daughter's second beta fish dies. Yeah, man, you know, the great thing about simulated fish is that you don't have to feed them or nothing. You can go on vacation yeah. and they still live. And that's the other part I was going to say <laughs> is like keeping an aquarium is expensive. So that gives you a lot of justification to spend a lot of money to really kit this out. And you're still saving money. That's it. Yeah. So I, you know, in my previous, some of my previous uh, mobile phone reviews, I would always shoot 4k video of my aquarium. If I shoot 4k video of my aquarium now, you guys will see tons of moss and no fish. It's just too much work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a lot of work. They are a lot of work. They're beautiful when they're clean, and there's nothing like a, a good aquarium. There's there's something about them that's mesmerizing and soothing. It's it's I think it's literally good for your blood pressure and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, they're they're a chore, and yeah. so yeah, go digital, man. Get the and same we just effect. had fish and wildlife here putting out a notice that some of the beta buddy little algae balls um, had zebra mussels in them, which are a super invasive species that will get into the waterways and just wreck stuff. So they had a huge recall on that. Uh, and, you know, there, there's a lot to consider that you don't have to consider when you're electronifying it. Chris, oh, Chris, Chris, you've been screwing up the webcast so far. Don't screw up the environment next, okay? I, I'll try not to. <laughs> Chris going to go put some snake heads in a local lake. <laughs> <laughs> That's very bad. That's very bad. All uh, right, let's 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 skip along to uh another You know what? Can I can, can I tell an aquarium story quick? Oh, yeah, sure. Go for it. Mike. So I, I I used to I I used to keep a bunch of aquariums and in my bedroom at my parents' house, right, years ago. I had a, a 30 gallon flat tank with aggressive cichlids in it. And I got a bunch of babies. They were like the size of my, you know, pinky, you know, the, my, the nail on my pinky when I got them. And there was a Jack Dempsey, a green terror, a blue Acara, a gold Severum, an Oscar, and a red devil. The old Jack Dempsey. The red devil was so aggressive, it ended up killing all the other fish and was basically by itself for 20 years. But I had a stretch where I was trying to incorporate other fish. I said, you know what? I'm going to get some snakeheads because they stay at the top and the, the Red Devil will leave them alone. One night, they lasted one night. The Red Devil threw them out of the tank. <laughs> <laughs> threw them out? This what do you mean? Oh. I found them on the floor because the Red Devil was like attacking them and they were literally <laughs> got shot out of the tank. This was the most <laughs> aggressive fish ever. It, it, it was filled with piss and vinegar, this fish. It was so mean. If if I flashed, like I used to wear jewelry, I flashed a jewelry by the tank, it would attack the glass thinking it was a fish. It, it was kind of a perfect you fish, the angry, crotchety old Italian man fish. I think it, it <laughs> took on the persona of its owner. 
All right, uh, sorry, you know, sorry to you know derail everybody. Yeah. That's all right. Sorry, that was, sorry to derail the uh, tech chat. That was <laughs> Take care good, of your fishy friends. That was a good story. All right, let's uh, let's drop something in. And, and that was powered by an, an Intel Atom-based processor, low-power Atom-based processor. Let's talk about something Intel as well. I'll try and smooth the segue there from the aquarium story. My God. Intel reveals 11th Gen Core Rocket Lake S CPUs with a major throttle up in performance. See what we did there? Throttle up, get it. Rocket Lake, throttle up, rockets. Go for launch. Yeah, man. Go for launch, yeah. Houston, we, we don't have a problem anymore. Intel has launched a new desktop processor, and I'm sending that out to the collective chat. Uh, interesting stuff. Marco, you are, as you noted earlier in the cast, are now hands-on, um, and uh, we are about to uh, you know, get into the heavy-duty testing of that uh, prior to the embargo lift. Um, anything you want to share other than that, what to expect? Uh, this is a... Um, a back port um, to, uh, of, of the Ice Lake, basically the Ice Lake architecture to the Intel 14 nanometer process, Ice Lake Mobile built on 10 nanometer. Um, anything else to share and thoughts before we move on from that? Uh, yes and no. You know, there there have been some unfortunate timings with retail releases. So some articles have hit already that are taking some of the thunder away from this release. But if the rumblings are true, I'm thinking that when reviews hit, the numbers are going to look somewhat different than what's already been published. I'm going to go on a limb because I believe this going to be the fastest Intel desktop processors by far in terms of single thread. Because once that gets tweaked completely, it's their latest core tech. Um, going to be strong single thread performance. It's the multi-core where things are going to be a little funny because they had to lop two cores off versus the previous gen versus 10th gen processors. But I'm thinking in terms of the overall platform, as long as power is not insane, you know, it's looking like a nice platform. You know, PCIe 4, um, you know, Intel's fastest core, you know, core architecture, you know, really mature chipsets, you know, that that the I.O. hubs are, are rock solid on Intel boards. So I'm looking forward to playing with it. I'm going to revamp all of the test beds and start completely fresh with fresh Windows installs and some new benchmarks to try to get some really clean new data. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'll have the whole picture by the end of the month. Yeah. yeah, when when you look at the when you look at the platform in general, I think there has a lot going for it as well. I mean, 20, 20 CPU PCI Express four lanes is is not trivial. Um, that's really good high bandwidth I/O direct to the root complex, which is you know you will see appreciable um, performance gains with that. You know whether it be um, you know GPU you know transaction related or storage. Um, so that's that's good stuff for sure. Lots of, lots of, you know, good enhancements at the platform level as well, not just the CPU. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's going to be really <laughs> strong for gaming. Um, you know what? We're, we're all kind of spoiled because like if you haven't built a system in a few years, building any modern system today with the latest gen CPUs, latest gen storage and a new GPU, if you can get one, it's just such a, a much better, more, it's a phenomenal experience versus anything from just a few years ago. So yeah, you know, I'm sure we're gonna nitpick and we're gonna find stuff that uh, that we don't like and stuff that we like, but I'm looking forward to, to giving everything a whirl. Sysadmin offering, but all the Z90, uh, C590 boards default at 250 watts PL2 settings, need to see wattage and heat numbers. Yeah, I think, so we're, we're hearing from some system builders um, not from Intel directly and not from any of the motherboard vendors that we need to hold off on testing because they're tweaking bio settings and things right up to the last minute. So I don't know, like I know there's lots of stuff people think they know about it already. It may all turn out to be true when actual product launches, but it may not based on some of the changes. So I'm, I'm reserving judgment until I run everything to through the ringer myself. Right. Hey, Chris, Marco, are you reserving up, judgment? <laughs> I'll, re I'll reserve judgment, but I think Marco brought up a good point that a lot of times quality of life trumps performance. You could have the fastest processor out there, but if you're having flakiness in various areas, um, it's not going to be a fun chip to actually use on a daily basis outside of some crazy benchmarks. So that is one thing has, Intel has historically done pretty well is they've had solid systems. So let's hope that uh, Rocket Lake doesn't have any issues with its launch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, it'll be interesting to watch, and we're looking forward to you uh, ringing it out there, Marco. Go get them. We'll do my. We'll do my best. <laughs> hey, staying on the Intel track, uh, this was an interesting, funny uh, 
headline that uh, we put up this morning, and uh, we got a little bit of a nod that this was coming. Uh, Intel NAB's former Apple pitchman, Justin Long, to rip Max in hilarious new ad campaign. And um, this is uh, this is some funny stuff. We'll have to, I don't know, can we can we actually play a video? We probably could. Uh, yeah, really uh, and get audio. It's not going <laughs> to get audio unless you share your whole screen. Um, give me a second. I can probably get that going because I haven't had time today to actually watch this. Yeah, it's, there, there, some of them are good. Yeah, so. some of them are some of them are pretty funny. But you know, long story short, Intel's going on the offensive, if you will. Um, now that they have parted ways with Apple and are not powering their MacBooks, it's Apple Silicon moving forward. So the gloves are off, and uh, Intel is exploring, or I should say, exposing the ways in which uh, Apple's MacBook product line is deficient versus generally versus Windows PCs is, is the bottom line, but Intel powered Windows PCs specifically, whether you look at things like touch display, you know, interface, uh, two in one functionality, uh, multi-monitor support, you know, there's, there's a number of jabs that Intel throws in here. Chris, I don't know if you, would yeah. you be able to fire that no. up? I've got it queued up. Um, I don't know if it's also going to play your audio double, so just mute yourselves for a second until the video ends. Okay, hit it. <laughs> well, I'm a Justin, just a real person doing a real comparison between Mac and PC. Come on. Oh, so you're a PC gamer? What's up? What's up with you? You're doing all this gaming on a laptop then? Yep. Wow. Okay. And uh, do we have a Mac game? No one really games on a Mac. I know. You want to hit one more, or is it too much to throw in there? <clears throat> Might as well hit one more. That was pretty. That was pretty good. I like his reaction. I knew that. <laughs> uh, hang on. If not, hello, oh. I'm a Justin. Just a real person doing a real comparison between Mac and PC. Come on. Okay, PC. Oh, cool. This whole thing's a touch screen. <laughs> and there's another one, too. Wow. All right. And now for Mac. Let's see. Oh, you've got a little bar here. Little baby one. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Oh, where's the mute button? Here's what I found on how to cook mutton. Oh, no, I, I don't want to cook mutton. What even is mutton? Okay. Good stuff for sure. I don't want to. I, cook, I, I, I didn't expect mutton. that commercial to trigger me because I've I've tried using that touch bar <laughs> on the Mac and it drives me insane. Um, I hope they're moving away from it. Like they are. Yeah. You they know. Are. Um. Yeah. It's not user friendly. It takes your eyes away. With something like we, you know, with the F keys there that they effectively replace, you can use tactile feedback to find your way there. But you've actually got to move your eyes down to see what you're pressing on on the on the bar there yeah no the bar the bar um was was an initial splash that eventually was ill received and has it, it will be phased out that's that's i believe what was you know rumored around i don't think apple's been you know vocal about it but it's it's getting de-emphasized marco any any thoughts yourself on this series um i think i think there were some good points made there i think it really speaks to the closed ecosystem that is apple and when you when you limit something you limit innovation and although apple has certainly innovated with m1 silicon uh it's no joke um the platform in terms of user interface and ux and ui yeah this, this hasn't really done much so what are your thoughts <clears throat> um you know i i think it's um I'm on. I'm on the fence. I like. You know, I'm a PC guy. I like anybody that takes a jab at Apple. So I'm all for it. Sort of. I'm all for it in that regard. Um, but I'm. I'm also of the mind that you don't want to really draw attention to competitors if you don't have to. But I think Intel is in such a position now, and and Apple has gotten so much good press on M1 that you have to do something. 
And all of those are really valid points. Like there's other ones that show multi-monitor setups. You can only have mm -hmm. one on an M1. And there's lots of little stuff with an M1. Like just this week, all the big news, oh, native Photoshop's available now. Yay, great. But guess what? All your plugins don't work. All the x86 plugins are broken in native at, at Photoshop. So there's right. so many things that aren't just right that I think it's good to point them out. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm happy that this stuff's out there. I'm not sure Intel should have been the one to do it, but it's good stuff. Right. And I've, I've been of the mindset even before when they were Intel based Macs that for what a lot of people are using their Mac for, it's really just a web browser machine and they'd be just as well served with the Chromebook. Yes, there's some people who are going to be pushing the further applications, but then you're running into issues like Photoshop with the new M1s, as you mentioned, the plugins not working and plugins are a huge part of the magic that makes Photoshop a real productive application for so many content creators, you know, and, and yeah, it's something that I'm sure will get resolved, but you may not get all the plugins you're looking for ported over. Um, you know, there's other applications you may need to reach for that suddenly aren't performing as well because they're still being emulated. Uh, it's going to be a rough transition process. It, even with Rosetta, the, the new Rosetta two working as well as it is, um, and then, yeah, you get things like they really need a touch screen because laptop users almost expect it in most cases, um, even if you're using Especially it very sparingly. Users. But yeah, the younger users are touching everything. And then you have the issue of, OK, you can use a iOS app on the M1 Max now, but they're built for touch and you don't have a touch screen. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, what's I, the what's the point? Right. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's it's that's anyway. interesting stuff. Marco, you made a you made a good point actually, and I think it's worth you know debating. Should should uh, Microsoft uh, had been better serving this up versus Intel? Um, I don't know. I mean, on well, one side of me says, yeah, it sounds a little more bit more organic coming from Microsoft, and then maybe a slide in the Intel branding logo, right, to you know underscore that. But, uh, you know, the, the flip side of me says, well, you know, what's wrong with being a little bit aggressive in your marketing with a partner that has basically said, yeah, we kind of don't need you anymore, you know? Yeah, I'm going to say something to upset everybody on the <laughs> Uh-oh. It, it, no, it, it, it's the tech press's <clears throat> fault and our over-reliance on benchmarks that Intel mm -hmm. had to do that. Like, all of these shortcomings of the M1 should have, I mean... Don't look at us because Apple doesn't send us hardware, right? But every, everyone that reviewed an M1 and sung its praises because it won a few benchmarks really should be following up on the long-term experience because I guarantee you there's a ton of niggles and things they don't like about it after the fact, you know, after the articles have gone live. Yeah, right. No, that yeah, I think that's a fair point. Um, living with a device versus uh, you know, the week or two that you get to actually experience it and test it and then review it. Living with a device is where it's at. I mean, you know, a 30 days, 60 days, 90 days in, are you still that impressed? You know, what can't you do? What 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 haven't you reported? And how many times does the tech press actually go back and circle back on that? Mm -hmm. Not often, not often enough. And, you know, and, and there's, yeah, and there's lots of nuance to understand too. Like if you look at, at single thread benchmarks, right? If you look at a single thread benchmark and say, wow, look how strong the M1 looks. You got to understand that only half of the core on x86 is being utilized because they can run two threads, right? right? So it's, <sighs> there's so much little nuance and all of that doesn't matter if the experience is better, right? And because they're eight cores and most of the software is not going to whack all eight cores, mm -hmm. you're going to have those situations where, you know, yeah, you can nitpick the technicalities of the benchmarks, right? But the experience is still better or as good on another platform. But there's just so much, so much nuance here that, you know, it, it drives me nuts. I wish, like, I, I wish we had more time in the day to just, you know, dive into stuff like that and have these conversations. But you know, we got to keep the lights on. Yeah, <laughs> takes a lot of resources. But, you yeah. know, it's interesting stuff, too. And, and the experiential side, I think, in general, is something that's underserved um, when, you know, the, the culture we have of just, you know, here, here's the hardware. It's coming in on a shipment and you know, the embargo is a week and a half away, less than two weeks away. So get on it. What do you what do you do? You 
Yeah. You, you, you hit the benchmarks, you, you do the best you can, but you don't really live with it. And living with it is where it's at. And then, yeah, the utility of, of a truly open platform and OEM partners innovating, doing unique things that you just don't get with Apple because, hey, it's in the wall garden. And if we didn't design it ourselves and if it didn't get wrung out, you know, nine ways from Sunday because they're super conservative, um, you know, it's it's not going to be reality. So, you know, you don't get things like Lenovo's great, you know, when they started it with the the yoga hinge, you know, the the two in one convertible that, that all that stuff never comes to light potentially uh, yeah. in that in that ecosystem. Yeah. So Oscar's got his comment. The answer to the Apple's M1 isn't going back to 90s, early 2000s style marketing campaign. Just make good hardware. So a couple of thoughts on that. A, we, we've seen Sprint do it to Verizon. I'm pretty sure that was the way that one went. <laughs> um, so it's it's not unheard of. You know, marketing companies may or may not be the most original. It depends. Sometimes you get a hit. Sometimes you're rehashing and, and making your statement that way. Um, but also right now, the conversation in the tech sphere, if you will, is about the Apple M1 and Intel needs a way to reinsert themselves into the conversation. And I think this is the way they've chosen to do that. Um, continuing to make great hardware in and of itself, unfortunately, doesn't cut it with the masses. Yeah, the, the techies like us will go through and actually look at how things are. But other people just know Apple, they've got a new thing, must be good. Yeah, you make a very good point, Chris. There's 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 a huge mass of people, a huge demographic that just assumes whatever is new that that comes out from Apple is is going to be innovative, is going to be new and amazing. And you know, on the surface, certainly the M1 M1 silicon is impressive and 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 a in a solid step of innovation for Apple for sure. Got to give them mm -hmm. full kudos for that. But yeah, the rest of it's the, the song right. remains the same not much changed <laughs> yeah you know? i guess i guess the irony of intel being the one behind this is a lot of the the features they're pointing out like having the touch screen and 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 those kinds of things aren't really much to do with having a intel chip in there but you know mm. yeah cool well let's uh let's step away from that uh interesting stuff good to see i i like seeing an aggressive intel i think you know when they when they start executing a little bit more, certainly in the mobile space uh, or on the desktop more so, they've been executing in mobile. I think, you know, Ice Lake and Tiger Lake were, were two great releases. Um, yeah, um, I think why not? Why not uh, thump your chest a little bit and say, hey, we're, we're making some things happen. So <clears throat> good stuff. All right, let's, uh, let's move on and uh, I'll drop this in. Uh, we'll keep clipping through the headlines and maybe get to the feature stuff, but we'll mention this quickly. <laughs> and, yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. AMD Epic 7003 series unveiled. Big Iron Zen 3 takes flight. Oh, my God. 64-core uh, Epic processors are just nuts. 32, 32 megs of L3 cache per core, which I, I just look at the cache architecture on this thing. And it's like, what is it? Two gigs of total cash across the chip. I mean, it is just two fifty two fifty six megs of L three. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no. It's it's just um, it's just a, a ton of resources on a chip. The way they've architected it with the chip chiplet architecture, um, just impressive stuff. Any thoughts there, Marco? Yeah, just monster. So we saw what Zen 3 did on the desktop, right? The, the Ryzen 5000 series was a significant step forward versus the Ryzen 3000 series because the architecture is that good. The newly designed cache hierarchy does, you know, lower latency and boost overall performance. There's just, you know, lots of goodness in Zen 3 and all of that <clears> comes <throat> to Epic in a pin compatible, socket compatible processor with up to 64 cores, which is a much higher density than Intel can offer with the Xeon right now. So just lots of good stuff with Epic. What am I, what am I, what am I missing here? Because I've got 30 up to 32 megs of L3 cache per core. Per per complex. Per complex. Per right. Per eight core complex. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Got yeah, it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. I was thinking it was it was more than that. But still, it's just just massive resources. Well architected chip. That's still um, a lot of cash for core. That's what four megs per core per yeah. actual core, and usually it, you're it's, seeing it's, two. It's, it's all shared. It's all yeah, shared. It's all shared. Right. Yeah. So, 
But even yeah. when you look at L3 cache on other systems, you see maybe two megs of cache <clears throat> per core when you break it all down. So it's still mm -hmm. double that. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's beastly. Yeah, let me let me uh, let me share this out. Um, hang on one second. Share screen. Yeah. Nope. Add to stream. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, it, just looking at this thing, what a what a absolute labyrinth. And when you talk about servers and server platforms, core density per socket in in a lot of applications is is absolutely critical um certainly you've got some wrinkles and some hurdles to get around when you talk about os licensing and things like that but as a rule in the data center um you know compute density in a square millimeter footprint is what it's all about yeah and your your cost is per you crazy. Per, per rack unit <clears throat> yeah that's a huge savings huge yeah savings yeah yeah, so it's impressive stuff for sure when you when you look at it, and um, I think we get that over there a little bit more. I think uh, I think the folks at AMD are gonna, you know, certainly with the advancements of of Zen three and the Zen three architecture in general, um, this is just uh, more of a good 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 thing that's going to, you know, drive adoption in data center clients. They're going to be chipping off some more market share with this thing. I think so. This is this is going to be a strong one. <clears throat> yes. Yes. All right. And then uh, the other thing they stepped out with that should help with uh, market share as well is the Ryzen Pro 5000 Zen 3 mobile CPUs uh, for powerful business class laptops. Uh, that was announced this week as well, dropping that into the chat. Um, think of Zen, uh, Zen 3 and Ryzen 5000 for laptops. Add all the pro features in for manageability and security for business class and enterprise class applications. And you got it a subset of those SKUs, right, Marco? Exactly. So the, the, the 15 watt uh, mobiles and three parts with pro features enabled, they're here. Um, business class notebooks. That's a big, that's a big upgrade. You know, you'll, you can finally buy an eight core business class notebook with pro manageability features. Yeah. What are you laughing at by the way? Me? Yeah. You were laughing. I'm laughing at how much I'm sweating from one cup of coffee. <laughs> look, look, look how shiny I got. You look were really, you were really laughing at that. You were laughing at yourself. Yeah, okay. No, I so, I so Raymond on the cast is a buddy of mine. He sent me a five and a half inch uh, newer screen so I can frame myself better. And now, I, like, I see myself much better when I'm on the cast. And man, I look terrible right now. I'm so shiny. Oh, stop! You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. That's why when the cast is live, you just got to turn your preview away. Don't look That's at it. yourself. That's it. It's right. it's the reality. It's the realities of being a uh, an Italian, though. The skin is not very dry. No, mm -hmm. no, no. <laughs> you tend to be uh, self lubricating species, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that one alone. I shouldn't no even problem. have gone there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's let's step on to the the features of the week. Uh, Radeon RX 6700 XT review, impressive 1440p gaming. Dropping it into the chat. Check it out. Marco poured through the. Um, uh, trials and tribulations and benchmarks of AMD's new Navi 22 based GPU. Good mid range card, priced in at 479, competes with a 3060 Ti or a 3070 from um, NVIDIA. What do you think? Marco. Nice GPU. Let me hold it up first. So yeah, we got Oscar Castillo waiting for Zen 3 Threadripper. Me too. I can't wait. Um, we had Peter ask a question earlier about, is this the worst year for GPU launches? And it's a tough year. The supply chain shortages, they are what they are. I know it stinks, but it's going to get better by the holidays. At least that's the vibe I'm putting out. So here, here is, uh, <laughs> here, here's the new bad boy. This is the Radeon 6700 XT. So you can see similar design language, the 6800 series, but only two axial fans, a little bit smaller of a card, um, two slots wide, a single eight pin and single six pin connector. You can see that heat sink does run basically the entire length of the PCB. Um, PCB has 11 power phases, nine uh, dedicated to the GPU, two for the memory. The outputs are similar to the 6800 series. There's no USB-C connector, but single HDMI 2.1 and three DisplayPort 1.4s. All of that super geeky stuff out of the way. You guys care about frame rates and performance and price, at least MSRP. 
and it's a it's a strong card, right? AMD is positioning the 6700 XT as a strong 1440p gaming GPU. That is exactly what it is. Um, it is one of the best 1440p cards you can buy today in its MSRP price range. We know street prices are all over the map. Um, generally speaking, I would say this is faster than a 3060 Ti if we just focus on traditional raster mm -hmm. it competes well with the 3070 3070 is generally faster there's a couple of spots where this was faster than 3070 but if you factor in ray tracing uh nvidia's just got an advantage nvidia is on their second gen this is amd's first gen unfortunately that shows in the ray tracing benchmarks but overall, it's a strong card. If you don't care about ray tracing, I mean, it runs ray tracing at, at like a 2070 super level. So it's not like it's bad at ray tracing, right? So let's not poo-poo the ray tracing. If it, if this launched before Ampere, we'd be like, wow, it's competing with NVIDIA's top or, you know, higher end cards. It's just NVIDIA's got Ampere now. So good card. Um, I would have no problem recommending it for someone for 1440p or below gaming. Um, it's interest, really interesting card to talk about if you look at the specs, though. So let's uh, I'll let you guys chime in, and then we'll talk about some of the pe peculiarities. I pronounced that wrong with the specs. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I think that's uh, that's fair to say, peculiarities. Um, yeah, looking <laughs> yeah. at uh, 3D Mark Time Spy here, you can see kind of this is – I think where it where it lands, um, sort of best representation of where it might land in terms of traditional rasterization, not with not ray tracing enabled, um, in between a thirty seventy FE and a thirty sixty Ti kind of performance, more consistently beating a thirty sixty Ti again in traditional rasterization, um, not um, not ray traced uh, game engines or partially ray traced game engines. Um, <clears throat> yeah, interesting stuff for sure. I think it, it does speak to the fact here's Port Royal, 3D Mark Port Royal. It does speak to the fact that obviously AMD is on their first generation ray traced uh, ray tracing accelerators, and uh, Ampere is is uh, you know a second generation effort, and so they've rung out and optimized. Um, yeah, what, what are your what are your thoughts in terms of the value proposition? Where does this card land for gamers, um, in terms of its price, performance, um, metrics, and uh, and and what those deliver? I mean, obviously, price it's all over the map. So I think they sold out right yeah. away. Nothing. If so, if we just focus MSRP. It's probably priced just a tad. Like I wish AMD came in at 449 instead of 479, because you know you have the 3060 Ti at 400 bucks, you have the 3070 at 500 bucks. Twenty dollar difference to get a 3070. It's worth spending that 20 bucks because then you don't have to compromise on the ray tracing. You know, is it? A, it's it's not a different experience in terms of raster. If you sat two people in front of a 3070 and a 6700 XT to play traditional raster, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. They're they're that close, but you don't have to compromise on the ray tracing with the 3070. That said, you get 12 gigs of RAM on this card, so down the line, you're going to have fewer issues with newer titles that may exceed the eight gigs on a 3070. So there's nuance. But if AMD came in at 449, it would have been like, I'm not going to say a slam dunk because the market's all over the map and you, it's hard to get stuff at MSRP, but it would have been a, a clearer, stronger recommendation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, the, the MSRP thing is, I mean, unfortunately you just have to, you have to focus on that take the, the market dynamics currently out of the equation completely. Um, and and because all we can go by is MSRP. So that's, I mean, basically that's, that's what we have to judge by. But if you look at it, yeah, you, here's Metro Exodus, no ray tracing enabled. 6700 XT is right between, uh, well, it's north of a 2080 Super and significantly north of a 3060 Ti, just south of a 3070 FE. Flip on ray tracing and that, completely flips now the 6700 xt is barely faster than a 60 uh, 2060 super uh chris i know you were looking to jump in there oh, i was just going to make a broader comment as we're discussing things like msrp and i guess at some point where should the manufacturers just raise their prices because if i'm if i'm going to pay over what we're saying is msrp for my card 
I'd rather it just mm -hmm. go to the manufacturer because then that money can at least have a chance of being reinvested into R and D instead of going to some scalper who's just trying to make a profit and it's going to use their profits to do more scalping. So, I mean, you, you'll just have higher price. Uh, the scalpers are still going to do their thing. They're still, they're, you know. they're still going to do their thing, but I think there would be less of them as, as you decrease the demand because I don't the price know. Is higher. Just you're gonna, you're gonna get higher. you're gonna get pitchforks, Chris. Pitchforks yeah, are no, right now. You are. No, you're gonna no, be paying it. the high prices anyway. And so no. then, as you know, the sales drop off, then you can get the nice big sales as as they can fill. I mean, it, I, I, it's I basically hear. impossible to get a car to MSRP right now, anyway, unless you're very, very lucky and very, very fast. I I see your point. I think I think it's logical. I think what you're what you're also dealing with is the reality of optics and every troll on the internet is going to would rip a manufacturer for for commanding that higher price tag regardless of the situation. You couldn't reason it away. But it I I don't think you're wrong, you know, it's just Let the market work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's unfortunate. The whole situation is unfortunate. But yeah, um, so interesting stuff. Marco, thoughts on uh, as well the the uh, performance per watt dynamic here. Um, it's not out of whack. Nvidia is maybe a is a little better. Um, it's it's not out of whack. The cards fans, even the reference card has a zero RPM mode on the fans under idle, so it's essentially dead silent if you're not under load. Um, in my test rig, right? So I, I need to get a better meter and I need to build a quieter test rig because my test rig is a typical system, right? NZXT mid tower, intake and exhaust fans, a Corsair power supply and an air cooler on the CPU. Not a loud machine by any means, but it's loud enough where a sound meter one foot away hardly can discern the difference when the GPU spins up. It's very real world. Mm. It's not good for the graphs because it shows everything looking really close in terms of noise. But that's the reality with these modern GPUs with, you know, more conservative fan curves. It's not loud. And it's it's it does get hot if you're looking at junction temperature, but not looking at GPU temperature. But AMD, you know, these GPUs can run at 110 C that's still within spec according to AMD. So if it's hitting 95 at the junction, it's still well below spec seems crazy, but it's not like this big, hot, loud GPU. It's just not. And power is a little higher on average, but not quite as high as some Nvidia GPUs at peak. So like there's nuance. I wouldn't have any concerns in terms of, of noise, power or temps with the 6700 XT. What's really interesting is looking at the specs shows how strong the RDNA 2 architecture with the Infinity Cache is. Because if you look at the core counts, the ROPs, and the setup, it looks just like a 5700 XT. Same number of cores, same number of ROPs, but it absolutely crushes the 5700 XT in terms of performance because of that Infinity Cache architecture and because of the higher clocks that the uh, architecture is capable of. So if, if someone's if you're looking at the specs two weeks ago and you're like, oh, this has the same number of cores as my 5700 XT, I'm not going to upgrade. Big upgrade. It's it's a monster upgrade <clears throat> over the previous gen, even yeah. with similar specs like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, th thoughts on what 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 did overclocking look like? Because I'm I'm thinking, you know, wh when you look at uh, what seems to be an efficient architecture from a silicon standpoint, obviously. Um, consuming more power than a competitive part from nvidia that you know, generally speaking has been a power you know power hungry platform on nvidia's side uh, is are they running this thing you know are they clocking this thing hot is there much headroom left on on the overclocking side is there much headroom left in general clock speed wise or did they really push it you know with these resources to the to the nth no, they're not really pushing it. The thing is a, a frequency beast, ah. um, 2.7 gigahertz, right? So to get the best performance out of it, right, what you got to, this is the, this is how it, it's much harder than it used to be where you just crank the clocks and hope for the best, right? You have to find that you have to undervolt it a bit to free up some power headroom and lower temps up the, the power limit then tweak the clocks and the memory clocks. What I've found for the last couple of, well, actually the 6800, 6900, and 6700, all of them, you can max out the memory clock, right? So there's room there, I think, <clears throat> for AMD 
to tweak their cards with faster memory or at least faster memory clocks. In terms of GPU clocks, because you're undervolting, right? You undervolt it, then you turn up the power limit. It's like a wash, right? So yeah. in terms of power, it really didn't change while overclocked. It really doesn't look like the clocks changed all that much too. Like I hit 2.729 was the frequency um, in the slider I was able to hit. The actual game clock ended up looking like only 50 megahertz higher, but it sustains those higher clocks longer. So, you know, in a couple of the tests while overclocked, it, it that's where it catches and surpassed the 3070. I think it was in F1 2020. And in time, no, Time Spy, it surpasses the 3070. And in F1 2020, it's like right there. It's like two frames per second behind. Um, that's a that's a big jump. That was like six or seven frames per second in F1 2020. And that's with a reference card, mm -hmm. with the early drivers, with me being under the gun to pull the article off. So I think with partner boards, um, with some more tweaking, it's gonna it's a really tweaker friendly card. Cool. Cool. Good. Yeah. Good. Any thoughts on it, Chris, before we move on? Yeah, I mean it it certainly looks compelling. I just want to see it in stock. <laughs> yeah. You know, th there these will be in easier to buy than the other ones cuz the GPU is like half the size of a or you know, 60% of the size of a 6800. It just they'll have more of them. It's just reality of silicon manufacturing. Yeah, Oscar Oscar Castillo says, "I think MSRP is on the high side for the 6700 XT compared to mm -hmm. a 3070." Lots of software to support RTX out there, which reminds me, AMD Fidelity FX, nobody talks about it. Um, we talk about some of the Fidelity FX stuff. but Yeah, yeah. You, you know what the problem with, with the Fidelity FX stuff is? It's not a problem. It's it's good stuff, right? It's, you, it's so much work to compare the image quality differences and what do you mm -hmm. use to bench on the other side? Do you sacrifice image quality and improve performance? Like, where do you do the comparisons? So, I think of Fidelity effects as just a value add stuff. You know, AMD's really done a kick ass job on the software side. The yeah. software suite's really nice in terms of features for metrics and and all the all, all the Fidelity effects features, the anti lag, the boost. There's a lot of stuff in AMD software, and they deserve kudos for it. It's just really hard to do comparisons for that stuff. Dramatically improved since the days of old. Oh my God, the software suite's really good. <laughs> yeah, but I guess yeah. we could say we'll have the same issue once we get their DLSS equivalent, which the name's escaping me. Uh, going is because the image quality is going to be different again. Is there different AI algorithms upscaling the frame, and it's going to be tough? There's to no, there's no, there's no AI, there's no AI in there. Some super <laughs> resolution. It's uh -huh. super, super resolution. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it might be doing There's some still sort gonna of have algorithmic different ways going about it. Calculation. No, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're such a cynical bastard. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's drop the last thing in. We got to move on. We got to finish up here yeah. strong. Asus ROG Phone 5 Benchmarks, the mightiest Android yet. And I should say I also put up a YouTube review, which I implore you to check out uh, as well today. I'll drop that into the chat. Um, but the ROG Phone 5 is an interesting, interesting device from the folks at Asus. Um, really just when you when you think about Android phones and what you could possibly build into a handset in terms of horsepower and capability, um, this would have to be the uh, absolute. Let me see if I can share this out. Uh, add to stream. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Um, no, okay. We're, we're getting weird here on the sharing. Um, but yeah, this would be the absolute, you know, strap to the gills type of device, um, in terms of horsepower and features for gaming and anything you want to do in terms of, um, you know, uh, enthusiast class, uh, activities on a handset, this would be it. Um, ROG Phone 5, here you're looking at the back of it here. You've got uh, that Asus logo illuminates, RGB lighting, of course, RGB, all the things it's in there. Uh, Asus Ar 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 Armory Crate software will let you dial in the colors of the rainbow. Uh, on the edge here, you've got uh, not only a side USB-C sync and charge port in addition to a bottom located one. And oh, by the way, you can see in that shot, there's a headphone jack too. Um, but there's there's a set of pogo pins there where you can attach the asus active aero cooler 
so you can actively cool this thing if you want. I mean, it is just ridiculous. And it's a very performant phone. Um, it is based on Snapdragon 888, the most current generation of Qualcomm Snapdragon mobile platform processors, goosed up um, in X mode to sustain its performance over time. And it leads the benchmarks, as you might guess, um, and really just sort of typifies what should be a gaming phone. Oh, by the way, 16 gigs of, of RAM on board. 256 gigs of storage it is it is excess in every sense of the word we don't have pricing on it yet um it's not official um so but, when do we uh, run crisis on it what's that when do we run crisis on it <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly i'm going to remove it from the stream here but um check out the re the review on youtube i i stepped through it in painstaking detail in the video review um pricing is rumored to be around $1,200 for the 16 gig, 256 gigs of storage version. Um, but it's not official in the U S it's actually launching next quarter in the uh, April quarter Q2. Um, yeah, but talk about just flat out crazy, you know, decked out Android phone. If you, if you need the, the biggest, baddest phone in the market, um, it's it. I also forgot to mention 6.78 inch display, 144 Hertz refresh rate available. Uh, OLED, it's an OLED display, 800 nits of brightness, HDR 10 plus support. Um, really just, just a, a absolutely strapped phone. If if I was to pick a, a gaming phone for editor's choice, and let's face it, gaming phones are are a class in, of their own. This this thing is a big honking phone. It's not a a delicate sleek phone. It's I mean it's sleek in in its own right for sure, but it's it's a big device. Um, but if you're into gaming phones, probably an editor's choice. Any thoughts, gentlemen? I think it looks cool, man. You know, the the, I, the performance of the phone, you know, with the early benchmarks that you posted, it's the fastest Android phone. So how do you how do you not like it? And it's got a nice screen, decent camera. You know, yeah, it's going to be pricey because it's bleeding edge in every regard, and it has some really cool accessories. But you know, if you want the best of the best, that's probably going to be it. If you're a mobile gamer, right? Yeah. If I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on a phone, I want it to be over the top. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is this one's over the top for sure you you get let me share this back out again um hang on one sec i keep doing that it's so the, the sharing on uh, Streamyard isn't great um a uh, little tricky but anyways G gfx bench manhattan here you go it, it you know if you look at it versus um previous gen yeah, 865 Snapdragon 865 flagship kind of performance you're talking about a 20 to 25 percent gain in gaming and and in some cases in cpu as well when you talk versus competitive flagship snapdragon 888 phones like the samsung galaxy s21 you're talking about more like a four or five percent gain in performance um but what you also get with the rog phone 5 is you get things like 65 watt charging um so the the actual you know wired charging is crazy fast Chris, you'll also like this, um, a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. So this thing literally lasted 17 hours on adaptive refresh. So if you just leave the phone at default, it'll flip between 60 hertz, 120 hertz, and 144 hertz. And we just ran PC, PC Mark for Android, the battery test, 17 hours. I mean, just yep. always, always on at 200 lux, and just, just crazy. Um, when you flip it to 144 hertz straight up and lock it in at that, still 13 hours. So the phone just like, yeah, it's yeah. it's crazy. So <laughs> any issues when you are charging? Is it 65 watt mode? You said, um, yeah. Does it heat so, up? I mean, so, can you hold it? Yeah, or... it's it's a it's a laptop, you know, level charger, you know, in terms right. of power. Um and the and the brick is, you know, as small as any, really, not too much bigger than the average uh, you know, phone charger. Um, yeah, no, it, it it's fine. It, I'm I'm not concerned, you know, charging it in the office here. No problem there. I will say under under uh duress, under gaming duress, the phone does heat up. 
um, certainly in X mode, which is again that you know slightly goosed and then maintains peak clock speed over duration. Or you can put the um, active cooler on it. Yeah, I, you know, and for me that's a little gimmicky. I mean, I like it if you know if, if I'm going to be gaming, you know, maybe I'll use it if you can use certainly there's paddles on the back of it, um, or even as a you know frankly as a little kickstand to you know do some binge watching on. It's cool if you're on the road. Um, but what, what's impressive about it as well is that, yeah, it can, you can feel it get warm, but, but when you stress test this, like we did a 3d mark wildlife stress test over 20 minutes, you know, just looping and looping 3d mark did not, I mean, didn't budge 99%, you know, um, per, uh, sustained performance over time, take it off of X mode. And it's like 82, 83% sustained performance when you look at a galaxy s21 for example on the other hand snapdragon 888 processor as well bleeds off up to 40 percent of its performance after just like three or four minutes in the test so they engineered this thing well and it's every bit a gaming phone for sure yeah cool. all right well, i just realized we're way over so you're probably <laughs> just wrapping up <laughs> Oh, we're only a few minutes over. It's a few minutes before between friends. But hey, uh -huh. yeah, um, good stuff. Um, check it out. The Asus ROG Phone 5. We're going to have the, the full printed review shortly. The, um, the YouTube review is up. I linked that. I'll drop it back in there one more time. It's good stuff. If you're looking for a gaming phone coming, uh, I'm, I'm thinking probably sometime in April. Um, but uh, out there on reviews now. Check it out, the Asus ROG Phone 5. And that uh, that wraps us up for today. Uh, Marco, why don't you tell us where they can find us, kid? Because I've been yapping. You can find us everywhere, man. www. Well, nice, no www. Hothardware.com, <laughs> Facebook.com slash hothardware, YouTube.com slash hothardware, Twitter at hothardware. We're on LinkedIn. We are everywhere. But most importantly, if you watch this and you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and tick that reminder bell. It helps us out a lot. And put, comment on the videos too. We have to get that algorithm, algorithm liking us more. But yeah, we're everywhere. And please come by the site and check it out often because we only talked about like a fraction of the stuff we posted in the last few days. There's lots more on the site to see. Yeah, man. And there's uh, there's also lots of different stuff. Let me drop this in the chat as well. This is going to be a long link, but I'll do a quick. Lots of different stuff you can you can pick up as well if you want some HH merch right there. Ooh, the I've comment got the... system did not like that. No, it didn't like it. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Whatever. Um, HH merch, uh, which you can, if you look down below uh, near the comments in the YouTube video, um, the YouTube stream, you can, you can check it out there. Um, but yeah. Thanks, everybody, uh, for, for hanging with us. Hit that like and subscribe. Find us on the web at hothardware.com. And thanks so much for stopping by.